right, we are live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm so excited to be speaking to a very powerful, very phenomenal woman. I'm talking of none other than Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela. Many of you know her when she was uh, Minister of Finance uh, for uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria under President Goodluck Jonathan. She also worked for about 25 years under the World Bank. Today, we are here to talk about her nomination for the World Trade Organization. Good evening, Your Excellency. How are you? Good evening, Josie. I'm fine. Fine. Thank you so much for joining me here on Live Chat with Josie. Uh, but it's a culture here, before we dwell deep into what we need to discuss about for you to introduce yourself. I know I've done part of that, but is there anything that I left out? No, I'm, I'm, you're, you did well, Josie. I'm, my name is Ngozi Okonjiwala, former finance, I'm former foreign minister of Nigeria, I'm former managing director at the World Bank, presently the board chair of Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance. Wow, you are a queen that wears many crowns. Mm. And before we start, congratulations on your nomination. We are so excited and I am hoping that you will scoop that one as well. <laughs> Well, thank you, Josie, for your good wishes. It's uh, tough, but um, we're there, uh, and we're going to do our best. You will make it. And President Buhari and ECOWAS have endorsed your candidacy already for the Director General of uh, World Trade Organization. How do you feel about that? Well, I feel really humble, Josie. I, I mean, this is uh, uh, being asked to serve by your country or your continent. Uh, or your, even your sub-region, it's always something of uh, a privilege and, and an honor. That's the way I see it. So I feel humbled. There are many capable people, but they've asked me to try for this. And yes, I, I feel honored. And But when there was a, a reluctance uh, uh, from the AU to endorse your candidacy uh, on the technicality that Nigeria cannot substitute candidates, how did you feel about that? No, that is absolutely not true. Um, okay. the, the AU has absolutely not endorsed anyone. There is a whole process, and uh, Nigeria has not violated anything. Nigeria was within its rights. Nigeria had already deposited its candidacy as a country. So within that, there's nothing in the rules that says you cannot uh, uh, switch candidates, provided you entered on time as a country. So the idea that the AU has endorsed anyone or that my candidacy is not supported is not true. Okay, but you served under President, former President, uh, good, good luck, Jonathan. And when President Buhari, the current president, <laughs> endorsed you, how did you feel about that? Was it, did it come as a shock to you? No, I, I mean, this is a very good sign. It's made everybody at home quite hopeful because it means we can cross, uh, there's, you, you can look in the national interest mm -hmm. and not in any other interest. And I'm very proud that uh, my president did that and, uh, and looked to national interest and said, who would best represent the country if we are going to try for this job? And I feel honored that he did that in the name of the country. Mm. And what are your views uh, on, world, on, on world trade globalization and ongoing trade wars between some countries in, in Africa and the globe? Well, I, I believe that one of the reasons, or the main reason why uh, I'm interested in this position is because I believe in the power of trade to, to um, lead to and shared prosperity of people, to lift people's lives. We've watched and seen as some of the countries all over the world have been able to improve the living standards of their population because they were able to produce and trade. And so for me, trade is an instrument for development. And therefore, for our continent, look at what they've done. We've done a monumental thing by uh, negotiating the African Continental Free Trade Agreement uh, to open up trade among ourselves, trade within Africa, Intra-African trade is about 15%, which is uh, small, and Africa's share of world trade is 3%. So we want to increase both of those because that will lead to our people improving their living standards. And being at the WTO will also help. Uh, going there, I will be working for all members 
But of course, I'm African, and I'll be interested to make sure that Africa also benefits from uh, whatever the WTO has to give. Uh -huh. But because I'm African, there's absolutely no reason why I cannot make sure that Africa also benefits. Look, mm -hmm. trade is not a zero-sum game. It's a win-win for everybody if it is done properly, and WTO assures a level playing ground. So that's why I'm interested. The other side you're trading with can win, and you mm -hmm. also can win. Okay, and um, Director General of World Trade Organization, say you get this position, what will you want to achieve and do in the first six months? Well, in the first six months, there are obviously many challenges confronting the organization. And everybody knows it, that the WTO is going through a rough time. So I'll be looking to see what are the critical reforms that members can subscribe to that will be able to do uh, either reforms to the dispute settlement system or you know updating the rule book of the WTO, which will take time, but is something you can start, you know, to make it conform to 21st century issues that deal things that deal with e-commerce, the digital economy, the green economy, the circular economy. How do we update the rule book? How do we even return the WTO to the founding principles on which mm -hmm. it was based? Principles of non-discrimination, predictability, and stability uh, of the world trade system. So those will be the issues I'll be looking at. How do we restore the balance of rights and responsibilities for all members? So there are issues, issues of how do we enhance transparency and notification, uh, which needs some capacity building for some countries. And then I would also be looking at the next ministerial, what which will happen mm -hmm. sometime next year in 2021. What are the key bits of negotiation that we need to carry forward? that we can get members consent around so that we can wrap up some agreements. So th those will be the critical issues I'll be looking at. And what should countries be doing post COVID-19 to uh, recover on trade deficits? Well, um, you, the post COVID era uh, uh, is a very, very important one. As you know, most countries are going through a recession or they are forecast to fall into recession this year. So every country will be looking to see how can they boost and revive growth. And trade is an important part of that. So we need to see how can WTO's uh, um, rules and regulations support trade. For instance, uh, during the COVID, uh, pan uh, during the beginning of the pandemic, there were some countries that put export restrictions on 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 medical supplies and equipment even on food um making sure that those are in accordance with wto rules and do not impede mm -hmm. those members of the world who don't have access to these supplies that will be very very important so it that is a a, a post-covid agenda or a covid agenda that i would be looking at and then saying what more can we do to enhance trade so that countries can grow, develop, and trade themselves out of the recession. Okay, interesting points there, Your Excellency. But you were also recently appointed by the President of South Africa as a member of his Economic Advisory Council. How is that going so far? So far, it's going very well. Again, it's an honor and a privilege. I just want to say that I really feel humble to be given these chances to serve. And uh, it's very... Um, very humbling for me to be on the on the presidential economic council it's going very well we've got some really top people and minds in that council and we're working hard to see how can we be responsive to the issues that his excellency president cyril ramaphosa is worried about and how can we produce the right advice and the right analysis to support his decision making mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were also you also once mentioned that your children are your biggest achievements in life. Do you sometimes seek their opinion before you take up all these positions? And like now you're looking up to the uh, WTO Director General. How is that going with your kids? Are they excited? Are they saying, "Mommy, you make it"? <laughs> Tell us about that relationship. Oh, the the, the relationship with my children. I I'm so happy about. Um, because uh, they are doing very well, but it's not about success. It's about being good human beings. 
And I always say it, you know, they want to hang out with me, their father and myself also want to hang out with them. And there's divided opinion. Um, I, I think three of them think it's uh, good. Uh, I should go for it. There's one who thinks it's, there are so many challenges and difficulties. Uh, you know, how are you going to do this and will you have time for other things? So there's a bit of divided opinion, but I would say by and large that they are supportive. And your husband? He is very supportive. That I can see. <laughs> he's always been supportive of, of my career. We talk it out. Uh, and if he feels very strongly that this is not a good thing to do, he will tell me. If he thinks it's something I should go for, I do. And there's sometimes I'm offered a position and he says, you know, let's talk it out. Maybe this is not the best. And I, I don't do it. Their positions have not done and offers have not taken. Uh, quite a few in my career because after talking it out, you have to have a strong reason to be able, want to do something. And for mm -hmm. me, two reasons. It has to be either commitment because some jobs are very hard, like being a finance minister is tough. You know, yeah. it's tough because nobody likes you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll need to ask you about that. I mean, being a finance minister in Nigeria, I mean, Nigerians are very vocal. And how did you feel? <laughs> how did you feel sometimes when you saw negative comments and negative statements against you then when you're in that office? How did you take that? <laughs> oh, you know, you will get that. You know, when you go into a job, you have certain principles. And if you know what you're doing, you know, you abide by those principles. And so you're not going to please everyone. So, you know, so really I say the people don't like you. It's not that I was looking for people to like me. I wanted to do my job. And if people respect the job you've done, that's good enough. And I'm happy to say, if you talk to Nigerians today, you'll find out they respected the job I did. They you may not have one of the, You are one of the most respected people in Nigeria today. <laughs> And I am so happy and proud of you uh, with that. But um, there are women like me uh, that look up to you so much. What advice can you give to professionals who are looking up to you as a role model? Well, I always say with respect to the way you lead your life, you know, you have to decide for yourself what is success. Success does not always mean being promoted to something. Mm -hmm. uh, success must be when you're doing a, 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 an assignment to a job, you feel happy. It's fun. Either that or you're committed. And I, that was what I was going to say about being Minister of Finance. I cannot, with a straight face, tell you it was fun. It was not. It was real hard work. But I felt really committed to it because of the ability to serve my country. So that got me out of bed with lots of enthusiasm every day. You know, so you have to be committed to your to what you're doing. No, it has to be fun. So just being somewhere, you know, that's not good enough. So that's the advice I give first. And I think if you're you you are committed to the job or you're finding that it's fun, you will it will happen. You know, you'll be successful without even knowing it. And and so um, that's one thing I advise. The second thing people talk about work-life balance. Nobody has a perfect answer. I don't have the recipe. If I did, I would have written it. <laughs> and then but we just have, I think it has to do with, you know, communications with your partner, uh, with, with your children, communicating all the time, making sure everybody talks and understands what's going on, taking your children into confidence about decisions. You asked me, did, did my children, they are involved in every single decision that wow. their father and I have to make. Even when they were young, we would call we would call them to the table as soon as they were able to read and say, look, there's this and this issue, what do you think? And so we've maintained that throughout their lives. I always call them, I consult them. Now they can give me advice. Isn't that fun? <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely fun. But yeah. you also sit on a lot of uh, executive boards. You are sitting on a lot of boards. So despite your family supporting you and like what you say, that you just need to know and um, be, be sure of what you're doing, how do you manage to juggle your time between family, work, 
your spare time to always keep yourself beautiful. You 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 don't even look your age. How do you do that? Oh well, <laughs> Joyce, I think I'll stay on your program forever. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're really making me feel feel good. I think the reason why I I I I'm able to do these things, to be honest, is because I enjoy them. I have to be truthful to you. I really enjoy what I'm doing. I feel privileged to be doing something I was trained for. I'm mm -hmm. trained as a development economist and to be able to apply those skills. And then I work very hard. I really do. I can work 18 hours, you know, and then the next day I try to balance with my family. I also multitask. I can be doing something and cooking at the same time. <laughs> so what do you like doing in your spare time? In my spare time, I like to read. Okay. I really do. That's the way I relax most is to get a good book. Um, you know, and it varies between contemporary books that you can learn from. Um, the other day I was reading something on the fourth industrial revolution. And I go from okay. there to to poetry. Sometimes I read the poetry uh, of uh, this ancient, this 15th century Persian poet Rumi, because his verses relax me, to picking up a good, a good book by an African writer, um, including my son, and reading that. You know, so those are the things I love to read. Okay. And, and you I know, love, by the way, I love to swim. That's why I keep. <laughs> Oh, you need to teach me. That is one thing I can't do, and I I really wish I could swim. <laughs> and that's the way I exercise. Is the exercise I enjoy the most. So I try to swim three to four times a week. Three to four times. Oh wow, that is good. That's why I think that's why you keep yeah. I mean, keep looking yeah. You don't even look your age at all. So for me, for people like me to know much about you, we've not met in person. Uh, thanks to Google. But what are those three things that uh, you want people to know about you that you know that people don't know about you? That I can be fun. <laughs> Most <people. laughs> okay, how? Most people think I'm so stern and I never have fun. Um, mm -hmm. That um, I, I like, it, that I, 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 I love uh, family life and, and children. Mm -hmm that I can cook, and I do cook all the time. People don't know that. Whenever I tell people, they get surprised. <laughs> What's your favorite meal? Oh, it has to be the Nigerian favorite meal, jollof rice. <laughs> <laughs> jollof rice and plantain. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the third thing, I just cut you there because you've spoken of cooking, yeah. Oh. Uh, the third thing. Oh. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I'm very, the people, I spend a lot of my time advising and mentoring others. And many okay. people may not know that. I love to be with young people. Maybe that's the third thing you, 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 you should know. I really love young people. They make me feel energetic. They make me feel hopeful. You know, so I do mentor a lot of young people. Um, more than I can manage sometimes. So that's it. Because by doing that, I feel like the next generation is coming up. And also when you men mentor bright young people, they challenge you, In, you know, including even my children. They challenge you and, and, and you know, they challenge your beliefs. They challenge your, your premises. And uh, I like doing that. So young people, the love for young people, maybe is the third thing. Okay. And do you follow football? Not really. One of my sons is crazy about, I mean, this is soccer, right? Um, uh, yeah, it's soccer. Football yes. and food. One of my children is absolutely mad about football, my youngest son. And uh, because of him, I started paying attention. Uh, so, but I don't follow it on any regular basis. Um, you know, I know some of the clubs, Yes, at home, at home and in England, but I don't follow very much. <laughs> so if you are forced to pick a team, which one would you team? What would you pick? Oh, I'd pick a team at home, Enyimba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then there's Liverpool. <laughs> oh, Liverpool, then you are now my good friend. 
I have to tell you, I have to tell you, you know, truth in advertising, you know, I'm on the board of Standard Chartered and they support uh, you. <laughs> That's why you know about them. Okay. <laughs> okay, that is so fine. Okay, Your Excellency. So as we are discussing on a part two, becoming Director General of World Trade Organization, I want to be the one of the first few to congratulate you for scooping that seat. I am so positive and I'm sure that you're going to make it. Amen, as they say at home, from your mouth to God's ears. Uh -huh. We work very, very hard. You know, mm -hmm. the competition is tough. I respect all the people who are vying for it, but I'm also there to do my best. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Director General, World Trade Organization. <laughs> but before I let you go, any last words to our viewers today? Um, I'm just, my last words to them is that I'm really so grateful to all who support me I, and, and, and who send me messages of support, those who follow me on Twitter and encourage me. It's really an amazing thing. You know, I draw a lot of energy from that. So I just want to say a simple thank you all out there and keep going. To the young people, the world may seem really dark sometimes, opportunities may seem limited, but I want you to keep up your hope. Um, things are going to get better. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. And uh, once again, wish you all the best. We'll talk after you get into that office. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. It was fun. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.